On this edition of Veterans Health Watch, learn how the VA is helping veterans succeed in school. Please join us. Welcome to Veterans Health Watch, a program sponsored by the Veterans Affairs Maryland Healthcare System that provides the latest health and benefits information for Maryland's veterans, their family members, and the local community. I'm Kenya Griffin. When our service members leave the military, many of them are ready to start a new life. This can mean starting a new career, we have families, and oftentimes going back to school, which can be a lot to juggle. So today, we're going to talk about the support that the VA provides to help veterans in school achieve success. Joining us is Dr. Mead Eggleston, the coordinator of the VITAL program for the VA Maryland Healthcare System, and veteran Kathy Cherizio, a student veteran. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you for Thank us. you. Dr. Eggleston, we'll start with you. I know VITAL is an acronym, so mm -hmm. can you please break that down for us and then tell us what it means? Okay. So it VITAL stands for Veterans Integration to Academic Leadership. And the program was started in 2012. And the goal of the program is to facilitate student veteran success on campus um, through a variety of services. And what's, what are some of those services or what support specifically do you offer those veterans? Well, I, I try to be a one-stop shop for VA healthcare services and VA services in general to the extent I can. So I offer um, things like uh, support for enrollment in veteran healthcare services. I'm a psychologist and offer behavioral health services on campus, um, uh, including assessments, therapy, that kind of thing. Um, I help coordinate care on campus. So um, for example, making medical appointments, following through and making sure the communication's clear. I also coordinate between the schools and the VA. So for example, if a veteran needs some assistance uh, with documenting a disability or challenge, let's say they have tinnitus related to some of their service work, then I can help document that and they can get accommodations to ensure they succeed on campus. Well, for uh, veterans, uh, some people think that enrollment in the health, the VA Maryland healthcare system is automatic. But so does a veteran have to be enrolled in the healthcare system in order to use your services, or I should say a student, a veteran student? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a yes and no answer. So to engage in behavioral health care, for example, or ongoing services, yes, they do need to be enrolled in the VA. However, I can um, help them enroll, um, so I can make sure that happens. I can also, even for people um, who may not be eligible for VA health care services, I can also make sure they get connected to the appropriate services for them in the community or on campus. So give us an example or some examples of why a veteran would come to see you on campus. Um, so some really common ones are um, they have questions about enrollment, they have questions about their medical appointments, that's a common referral. Another one is they'll, um, they maybe want to, um, they know something's not working, like maybe they're just struggling to, re to adjust from coming out of a military culture into the campus culture, which are really different, and so I can help people um, develop some skills and some insights so that they can successfully navigate that transition. Um, I, um, I also can help a lot with some of the case management and care coordination needs they might have, some of what I mentioned before, or I think another big piece of what I do is connect them to the right um, service within the VA. So for example, I, I work closely with our transition care management team and the great complex care, um, case management care coordination they do for our um, returning combat veterans. I think it's so smart to have the resources right there on campus for our veterans who are students and they're uh, typically they're a little older than your your average student. They've had totally different life experiences mm -hmm. so I think it's great to have that immediate connection and so when you're when we talk about that connection between being a student or being a successful student in healthcare, mm -hmm. what do you see how do you see that working together and 
and yeah. to uh, to help that veteran achieve success. Okay, so yeah, um, so I think some of it is is the cultural transition. You know, being in the military isn't just an occupation; it's it's a culture. It's twenty four seven. It's a set of values, beliefs, ways of acting, and so I think. On a college campus is often really different from that. There's no, you know, there's less hierarchy. There's less, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's mm -hmm. really different. Um, and so I think helping, supporting people succeed in that um, and, and understand that culture and also even understand like what's an academic calendar? <laughs> what are some of the things that they need, the tools they need to access? What's, how do you get to tutoring on campus? Mm -hmm. um, that kind of stuff, which any adult learner needs to know. Yeah. Um, so I think it's not, some of that's also not just veterans. Well, Kathy, let's bring you into the conversation. I understand you and your husband are student, that veterans and students. That is correct, yes. Um, I'm an Army vet. I served 2001 to 2004. And um, my husband's a Marine vet. He served in the initial invasion of Iraqi freedom. Um, and so we've both returned to school as adults with a family. And um, there are a lot of challenges, and a lot of vets are in that situation. We come out. And we've got married and we have children. We're going to school with a family and we're finding out that an education is necessary. You know, when you're in the structure of the military, everything's kind of laid out for you. Mm -hmm. Here's gonna be your your path to promotion. Mm -hmm. This is your, your MOS, your job, and you come out in the civilian world and that's not all laid out for you. And time management is different and just identifying what the challenge is. Often yeah. we don't, know how to identify that and so we get frustrated and we c we go to me we just talk yeah. to dr Mead. she helps us to even pinpoint what's going on and then help us find the resources inner resources community resources all of that and it makes a big difference i was thrilled when i came back to school and i found out from cc from the school i go to oh we have a, a vital coordinator here i was like what is that I didn't even know, and I was I was beside myself, so thrilled that we had our own person, our own liaison. It was wonderful. That's what I was going to ask you. It sounds like she's a liaison, mm -hmm. and how how has she helped you to really connect with the VA Maryland healthcare system? Well, prime example, um, you know, when President Obama he made it, um, ma he had the mandate you had to have healthcare, and we all come out of the military, and we're not working. Most of us are using um, GI Bill or some sort of benefit that and we're not working per se and so we don't have the health care well we all the light bulb went on we were like yeah we have health care we're vets <laughs> so, and me got her laptop out and got us in a va meeting and got us all signed up so use it or not you have it yeah. and you're in compliance and it's there and we actually ended up doing using it don't we we so it was, it was a wonderful thing. And I understand you're also part of the Student Veterans of America? Yes, that's correct. And, and so in that role and appearing on the show working with, with Dr. Eggleston, mm -hmm. what would you like to tell your fellow, fellow veterans? Maybe some who are in school or contemplating it, what would you like to I, share? Well, I would definitely recommend getting involved in the local chapter, whichever school you're in. They, they usually will have one. If not, you can go to the website, SVA website, and look it up and see about having a chapter. My husband and I are both involved in the local SVA chapter, and we really like to set an example and motivate, inspire everyone to say, you can do this, get involved, network, take advantage, and and believe in yourself and it can happen and great things can happen you learn about yourself and you and you find successes that you didn't even know were possible well That's thank what. you thank you so much thank you dr eggleston i know you're going to stay with us for another segment and thank you for joining us thank your husband too for your service both of you for your service we're going to take a short break but when we return we'll learn more about the vital program and how it helps faculty and staff at our local colleges understand our veteran population so please stay tuned applying for the VA health care system is one of the best things you can do for your health and well-being a lot of veterans for some reason don't realize that they are eligible for VA health care benefits so we always encourage the veteran to call because each veteran is enrolled on a case-by-case -case basis once I obtained the knowledge that I could enroll, I enrolled, and it's been a great decision ever since. A veteran can learn more about eligibility for VA and health care at 1-800-463-6295, extension 7324. Welcome back to Veterans Health Watch. Today we're learning about the services that 
the VA provides to help support veterans who are in school. And we're going to learn more about the services they provide to the faculty and staff at the local colleges. So joining us is Dr. Mead Eggleston from the Vital Program for the VA Maryland Healthcare System and Christina Duncan, the Director of Veteran Services for the Community College of Baltimore County. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. And Mead, let's start with, let's pick up our conversation again about the services you offer or how you help the staff and faculty at the local colleges. Sure. Um, so it's a couple of ways. So part of it is um, I'll, I often do, uh, do regular presentations on um, best practices working with student veterans, also on military culture, and um, which is tied into the best practices and, and helping people understand how how a student veteran might experience um, the college environment and interactions with professors. Um, I also do continuing education uh, for mental health staff on the different campuses I work on um, to address the special mental health needs that might come up or the more common mental health needs that might come up for student veterans using their services. And we have Christina here from CCBC, but I understand you work with other colleges in the area. Tell us about those colleges. So it's Along with CCBC, um, I work on campus at Towson University, so I'm there one day a week, and then I also work um, closely with the University of Baltimore, um, providing a lot of um, on-campus education and outreach. And it's good to hear we talked about the, the supportive services that are available to our veteran students on campus. So, Christina, it's great to have you here. Can you tell us about your role with CCBC? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm the Director of Veteran Services there, and I am over six campuses. We have uh, three main campuses, Catonsville, Essex, and Dundalk, and that's where our three uh, Veteran Resource Centers are located. And then we have three uh, satellite campuses, one at Owings Mills, Randallstown, and Huntington. Valley. Uh, the Veteran Resource Centers are um, a big part of what I do. I oversee those and they are where the students, our military students, can come and get all kinds of information about uh, their benefits, about um, events that we have on campus. That's another thing I do. I, I uh, coordinate events such as our military ball, our Veterans Day events. Um, we also have programs and initiatives on campus like Vetoga, which is a, um, a military sort of yoga program. One of our instructors took it uh, under her wing. She actually went and became a certified Vetoga instructor, so we were pretty excited about that. We also have um, in the fall piloting an Academic Development 101 course which is going to be for our military students. So several things like that. They can come and learn about those things. Um, community resources like housing and jobs and job fairs, um, resume writing for like civilian or military to civilian resumes, all kinds of things. So that's, that's mainly what my, my job is to help the veterans get what they can to succeed in school and in, in their civilian lives onward. We'll have to talk to you more about Vetoga later, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's great to hear all the resources available for our veterans. We want them to transition mm -hmm. in a comfortable way, so it's good to hear about that. How does the VITAL program help you in your role in helping our veterans? So, um, just like I said, I, I want to make sure that our veterans have everything that they need to succeed, both inside their education and outside as they proceed on, and part of that is uh, learning about their VA benefits and also um, behavioral health, which is what VITAL is um, all about, the VA side of everything and as well as behavioral health. And me, Dr. Mead has been a, a font of information for all of that and a huge help to me. Um, if, if faculty and staff ever have challenging situations on campus, she's there to help them sort of navigate their way through that with our military students mm -hmm. if, if they ever need it. She's done numerous trainings with myself as well as um, on her own for faculty, staff, students, administrators about what resources are available at the VA, in the community, on campus, what she can do for us. Uh, you know, she's amazing. She really, I go to her. If, if I need anything, she's really the first person that I ask, like, where can I get this? And she, if she doesn't know, she will do her best to find it. So I, I really am thankful to have her there for, for, for me and for our students. Yeah. So. Which I was going to say ultimately benefits our students if, if she mm -hmm. is there for you. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the military culture, you touched on it, but please explain for us why is it so important 
for the staff, the faculty to understand the military culture and understand the perspective that our veterans bring to their, their academic experience? Um, so I think, I think part of it is that to realize it's a culture, mm -hmm. um, that like any other cultural sensitivity training, it knowing the perspective that the person you're working with is coming from improves the communication. You know, realizing that a veteran might treat a professor a little differently than a non-veteran student because of their their um, training in address in responding to hierarchy mm -hmm. and commands mm -hmm. and how that the position they put them in. So it's a lot of I think that's uh, it's a complex piece that I don't think people always realize is so complex. Yeah. So that's. That, that's what I try and do. And how do you outreach to, to the veterans? How, do, how are they aware of the services on the campus? Do you know their veterans when they enroll? Um, so we have that question on our application and then also we have of course the GI Bill is a big tell and then uh, students will also self-identify just by coming into the center mm -hmm. or coming to some of our events and things like that. So. That's how we find out about them a lot. And me, do you have veterans who come to you directly? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's taken some time for people to decide I'm okay <laughs> um, and useful. I, I, it sort of some along the way, some things I've done is I'll make a point of sitting for an hour to eat my lunch at the student vet centers, okay. and people get to know me there. Um, I think uh, also as people have learned more about what I do through, I do a lot, for example, in terms of say when a, you know going to student um, SVA meetings, mm -hmm. Student Veteran Association of America meetings on the different chapters and the different campuses I'm on and people learn a lot that way. I think word of mouth is also really useful. Mm -hmm. that, uh, um, and what about the staff? Do they come to you directly? Do you reach out to them and offer the services? Both actually. Yeah. Yeah. And we have people who do call the center or call um, Dr. Eggleston mm -hmm. for help when they need it. And then we've been making it a point to go to our department and schools and talk about what we have and what mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Egg Eggleston offers on campus. Okay. Yeah. So Dr. Eggleston, for our veterans or in even their family members who may be watching the show today, if they want to take, advantages of, take advantage of the services you offer on the different campuses you mentioned, how, what's the best way to get in touch with you? So um, call or email me. Um, my phone number is 443-206-9203. That's my VA cell. I have it with me all the time. Um, there, that's the best way. People who are students on those campuses can walk in. I get a lot of walk-ins or, you know, a lot of times they, someone brings someone in. <laughs> um, so that's a great way to do it. I will see people walk in if I'm busy. Sometimes it's good to make an appointment just mm -hmm. to make sure I'm not, I'm available when they are. Yeah. Um, so this would be what I'd say. Cool. And there, there is a VA website as well. Um, it's on the VAMEX uh, A to Z list of services under VITAL. Um, so that's a great place. You can see my hours. Um, I'm, o I'm off site. I work on campuses three days a week. It's, um, it's CCBC two days a week, one Catonsville, one Essex, Towson University one day a week. And then I'm, I'm at UB doing some of the presentations as well. So that all that's listed, um, as well as the veteran services websites for those schools at the on the VA on the Vital website. Well, thank you both for joining us. Thank you for all you do for our veterans. This is exciting information, and we always love to hear about the community also helping the VA support our veterans. So, thank mm -hmm. you both for your time. Thank, thank you. you. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, we'll learn about more services available for our returning veterans. So, please stay tuned. The Telephone Care Line is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you've got a question about medication, diabetes, your, di your diagnosis, any concerns, you can always give us a call. People want to hear a live voice and not the machine. We're always there to answer your questions. Give us a call. 800-865-2441 and press 1 to speak to a nurse. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A nurse is happy to help you. Welcome back to Veterans Health Watch. Today we've been talking about how the VITAL program helps our veterans achieve success in school. And joining us is Brittany Ranahan, a social worker and case manager for the Transition and Care Management Service for the VA Maryland Healthcare System. Brittany, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. First, give me a, an overview of the Transition and Care Management Program. What does it mean and how does it support our veterans? So the Transition Care Management Program was formerly known as the OEF, OIF, OND program. We served 
are combat veterans who served in military op operations enduring freedom, Iraqi freedom, and New Dawn. We've since expanded the program to include um, any combat veteran from, who served in a military operation since September 11th, 2001. And we now serve any non-combat post 9-11 veteran who's having some complex care needs related to their transition. Okay, and so what does your program offer to these specific veterans? So we are designed to serve our transitioning service members and our post 9-11 combat veterans to help them transition from military life to civilian life. So we do that through focused care coordination, case management, and enhanced care planning. We help address some of the unique needs and challenges that are related with, you know, or related to this population from anywhere from really like education and, and employment, social engagement, difficulty with interpersonal relationships, all the way to medical and behavioral health care needs. And we get them connected not just with VA services that can actually meet their needs, but also community resources that are out there for them. Brittany, you mentioned we, you say we, and I think it's really important for people to understand there's a team mm -hmm. of, of a multiple, multidisciplinary team of professionals wrapped around the veteran to, to help him or her. Please explain how this team operates. Absolutely. So we have a fantastic team that's composed of nurse case managers, social work case managers, a transition patient advocate, and then we're all managed by our program manager. And we often coordinate with physicians or psychologists, therapists, definitely like across all disciplines to really tailor each individualized care plan for the veteran. And you work with the veteran to come up with that plan? Yep, the veteran helps us identify what his or her goals are, and we identify barriers that might be in the way and steps that they would need to take and that we need to take, honestly, to help them accomplish those goals. And you also mentioned complex case management. What, what do you mean by complex case management? Yeah, so that is where, you know, we have veterans who have really complicated needs that spread across multiple life domains. For example, it's not uncommon that a veteran suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder might also be struggling at their job. They might be having a hard time holding stable employment or engaging in school. They might be having a difficult time engaging socially or they've been struggling with some interpersonal relationships. It's also not uncommon that veterans are struggling to stay connected with the care they actually need. So it's one of those things where complex care management, complex case management comes into play because there are these different domains that are being affected by a problem. And so that's when we step in, we triage those problems, we make an assessment with the veteran, we collaborate with the veteran to say, hey, what's going on? And we identify, again, those barriers that might exist, uh, identify some goals, and outline what we need to do together as um, you know, a team to really help the veteran accomplish those goals. And when we talk about, you know, to earlier in the show, we worked with, we talked to our vital representative mm -hmm. who helps our student veterans or our veterans who are students achieve success in the academic field through connecting them to the VA services. What's your relationship like with the vital program? So we have a great relationship, particularly with Mead, but also just with the vital program because um, we see a lot of similar clients. When Mead is on campuses, she's often interacting with student veterans from our era that we haven't heard of or connected with. So we partner together uh, to make sure that those veterans are getting access to the healthcare that they need, but also to the case management that they need, that they're getting connected with VA services and community resources that can really benefit them in the long run. And that case management is so important when you talk about all the different specialties and, and other areas of beyond primary care, to have someone help you connect the dots. Absolutely. Yeah, it means so much. We also talk about how we are a big system and that system navigation, and not just the VA system, but the community mm -hmm. resources. We really are patient navigators for our veterans in our big complicated system, but also um, among the community resources that are available. And so how many veterans would you say that are part of your program are actually in school? So of the veterans that I see or interact with, I would say that more than half at least are either in school now or are interested in going back to school. It's such a significant financial benefit for them that it really incentivizes them to, um, to kind of go back to school. And it also provides such an opportunity for them to further their post-military career that mm -hmm. it's hard to pass up. And that can be also a challenge 
for when you talk about the transitioning from civilian, I'm sorry, military life to civilian life, we learn that there's a different culture. There's a, military has its own culture. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges you see? Yeah, so it's a great, the education benefits are wonderful. And we really, and when I say we, I mean the Transition and Care Management Program, really encourage our veterans to utilize those education benefits. It's a part of our assessment. It's oftentimes a part of our enhanced care planning, goals for education, how to use those benefits. But sometimes that means that they can kind of jump into things too soon and maybe when they're not totally ready for it. So they are transitioning from military life to civilian life, they're juggling a lot of things already, and then they add school onto that where they're having homework assignments or they're having to take tests or do things outside of the classroom. And they also have to kind of interact with a student population that culturally may not understand where they're coming from, their perspective or what their needs are. And all of that combined can be really overwhelming. That's when it's really important that, you know, someone like myself with the transition and care management team or Mead from the VITAL program can really get involved in that veteran's life and really support them, whether that's through achieving success at school or transitioning to civilian life in general. And so the, the two can overlap to a, to a certain degree. So help us understand the difference between the VITAL program and the transition and care management program. That's a great question. So the transition and care management program, we work with all of our post 9-11 veterans um, and again, that's veterans who've served since September 11th, 2001. And we offer case management services at the VA medical centers. Um, we work with s the veterans, whether they're in school or not, and our goal is to really help them transition from that military life to civilian life. VITAL works with student veterans, whether you know they're uh, post 9-11 era or not. Okay. And their goal the goal of the VITAL program is to really help that veteran achieve success in school. And also those services are offered on those college campuses, which are a great way to engage those veterans. So for our veterans who are post 9-11 veterans, as you mentioned, who may not be connected with your services yet, how do they get in touch with the transition and care management team? Another great question. So for our veterans who are interested in connecting with us, they have to be enrolled in our healthcare system. So um, definitely going through enrollment, getting assigned a primary care team. And then they can call us directly or they get referred to us through their primary care team. But um, our number is 410-605-7259. They can call and ask for me or really any one of the team members and we'll get them set up. And you support our veterans throughout the VA Maryland healthcare system? We do, yes. In every clinic, uh, including our Eastern Shore clinics, we right. have veterans who are enrolled in case management and active in case management. Um, everywhere, really. Great. Well, Brittany, thank you so much for joining us today and helping us understand the services you provide for our veterans. No problem. Thank you, Kenya, for having me. Well, that wraps up this edition of Veterans Health Watch. If you have questions about today's show or have suggestions for future topics, please call us or visit our website. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And remember, if you are a veteran or you know a veteran who is not using the VA Maryland healthcare system, please connect with us. We'd love to serve you. On behalf of the VA Maryland Healthcare System, thank you for joining us. Please join us next time. I think one of the exciting campaigns that the VA Maryland healthcare system has embarked on is the Televet campaign. As a veteran myself, you know, I'm really more interested in what a fellow veteran's perspective on their healthcare service is going to be. So I would really encourage all of our veterans who have been to a VA Maryland healthcare facility to tell fellow veterans about their experience. I wish someone would have told me about the VA healthcare years ago. If you see a veteran, ask them if they're using VA healthcare. Make a difference, Televet.